time is it? Do you know what time it is? It's the mystery box challenge time! Yep! Come on in! Let's get started. channel and you're stopping by for the first time from another creator's channel thank you so much for stopping by welcome to my channel what do I have going on for you for today well you heard me it's that time it's August which means it is mystery box challenge time the mystery box is put on by Courtney over at creative on the cheap we do it about every two months and it is where a bunch of us creators get together. We send each other a box full of random items that we've got a DIY with. Usually there is a twist. There's always a twist and Courtney really goes out of her way to think of a good twist. The twist for this challenge is we've got to use a piece of the box, a four by four inch piece of the cardboard box that our items came in and incorporate it into our DIY somehow. Along with that twist, there are always two challenge items that are wrapped up that we've also got to incorporate into a DIY somehow, along with seven to 10, like I said, random items. This month, I received my box from Jamie, that crafty DIY guy, and I sent a box over to Jennifer over at A Little Bit of Calm and Crazy. So you'll wanna head on over to her channel after this to see what I sent to her and what she comes up with. But for now, I'm gonna open up this box that Jamie sent me and let's see, was he kind or was he a little bit on the, uh, I'm gonna challenge Kelly's side. Let's take a look. Okay, first we've got a note here from Jamie and it says, hey Kelly Barlow, I'm so excited to work with you on this month's mystery box challenge. I've always been a fan of your channel. Thank you, Jamie, that's kind. I hope you have the opportunity to return the favor and send me a box one day. Yeah, me too. I love sending boxes to new creators. Fall is my favorite time of year, so there are some fall goodies and a few fun challenges in this box of goodies. Can't wait to see what you make. Big hugs and healing prayers for you and your family. Jamie, the crafty DIY guy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That always just... Uh, chokes me up a bit when um, I see how much people are thinking of us and keeping us in their thoughts and prayers. It really means um, a ton to me. Okay, so let's see what we have here. We've got challenge item one and challenge item two, so we'll open those after. Alrighty. <laughs> oh, Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. Yeah, I'm gonna say I hope I get you next time so I can return the favor. We've got a dollhouse here. Yeah, that's cute though, a dollhouse. And we have got some of these adorable scarecrow hats. These are new to Dollar Tree this year. They come in a couple of different colors. This is the black and white uh, buffalo check. We've got some pom-pom trim, some floating candles, okay. We've got some orange yarn, raffia pumpkins, a four pack, love it. Dollar Tree's wood white birch stems. Ooh, cute, some acorns in the fall colors. Oh, I love this. Uh, these recipe signs that Dollar Tree carries. We got apple pie and hot apple cider. Honestly, I don't know that I can cover these up. These are just gonna have to be incorporated into something because um, I saw these last year and loved them, went back from, they were gone. And so since Jamie sent them to me this year, I'm gonna have to do something special with these. And I think I know what I'm gonna do. He has also sent me one of these uh, newer uh, whitewashed houses. These come in a few different colors and a frame that says mom. 
Alrighty, so far so good. I'm gonna say that he was on the kinder side. Now we've got the challenge items. Challenge item one. I think I'm nervous based on the dollhouse. Okay, we've got a night light. Okay, that's fair. And challenge item two. Oh my word. Seriously? Suction cup hooks. Okay, it could be worse. It could be worse. When I get challenge items like this, I like to think outside the box and not use them for their intended use. But um, I think I have an idea of what I want to do with these. So yeah, it could have been worse. Okay, Jamie, I will tell you the three challenging items here are these three. Overall, I think that this is a very workable box. If you're new to my channel, I'm gonna set this stuff out on a table, I'm gonna touch it, move it around, sleep on it a bit because that's when I get my best ideas and I will meet you back here in just a flash. Yep, I'm gonna start off with this challenging dollhouse. Thank you, Jamie. Luckily, this dollhouse disassembles pretty easily. The windows and all these fun little pieces pop right out, which is gonna make it a lot easier to paint. To paint this, I'm gonna go in with some of Waverly's Elephant with a touch of black in that paint to darken it up a bit for the roof. All the windows, doors, and these foam bones that you can get from Dollar Tree right now in the Halloween section. I'm gonna give these a coat with some black matte paint. Do you know where I'm going with this? Of course you do. This is going to be a Halloween themed dollhouse, but wait for it because I'm gonna do more than just paint this dollhouse. And the house, well, it's gonna get a coat with some of Waverly's Cashew, my absolute favorite color ever. Have I told you all that my Walmart finally did away with that horrible Hello Hobby paint? They brought back the Waverly and they have a whole new line of colors out that I am most definitely on a mission to collect. This here would be an example of me just adding a bit of black to some of the features before I put the inserts back in because I felt like it was just missing a bit of something. Now I'm gonna take a stiffer paintbrush and using a black ink pad, this is by Jot, Dollar Tree in the office supply section has ink pads. Typically you can find it in black, red, green, and blue, I think. Pick up the black because it is perfect for distressing a piece such as this. I'm gonna dirty this up a bit because this is a haunted house and it needs to look spooky and this is gonna add just that finishing touch that I feel like this DIY needs. I didn't show it, but I popped those window inserts right back in there and to the edge of the roof there, I thought that'd be a cute place to add those foam bones that I painted black, kind of spookying up this a bit spookying. Is that another word that I need to add to the Kelly Barlow vocabulary dictionary? I'm thinking so, spookying it up. Ask me where I get these, I really don't know. It just really comes natural to me. Now what I didn't show before I painted this because I didn't wanna show you this because I figured if I did, you'd know where I was going with this. And I kinda wanted to keep you guessing, leave the surprise element in this. I cut out a notch there at the bottom of this house. So I could then take the challenge item that Jamie gave me, which is this plug-in night light, and insert it into the back of the dollhouse. I know, right? What a cool DIY this is gonna turn out to be. I'm just using some hot glue, probably a lot of hot glue, maybe a stick or two, and I am just gonna pound that light around the edges, anything that is touching the house. I'm gonna put some hot glue to hold that light in there good and tight. Let's go take a look at what this looks like. Why not? 
make a nightlight, a spooky nightlight out of one of Dollar Tree's dollhouses. Next up, these amazing recipe plaques. These are way too amazing to cover up or repurpose. So I'm gonna take these and on the back side of one, I'm going to add a thicker jute twine from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna do it at each of the corners, kind of putting them at an angle. I wanna put enough, I guess, twine there so there's some leeway for hanging. I'm gonna place a strip of hot glue right along the top there and the bottom strip, gluing these plaques together and making them kind of, I guess, a double-sided plaque. For those of you who are new to my channel, I have a hanger for plaques and it is used for double-sided plaques and I like to make them. So with this, I thought it was perfect for my kitchen hanger. Once I got these glued together, I decided to use some of these burlap sticker flowers. These are new by Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. You can find them right now. And just to add a bit of embellishment to these to finish it off there in the corner. These plaques, like I said, are super amazing. I had my eye on them last year and missed them because I didn't get the getting while the getting was good. So now that I have them, look where I'm gonna put it. If you're interested in this wall decor hanger, I'll link it at the end of this video so you can see just how easy it is to make one of these. These houses are a pretty new addition to Dollar Tree this past year. They come in a couple of different colors, different shapes and styles. These are awesome, again, all on their own. And there are ways to just kind of enhance these plaques using some items at the Dollar Tree. But before I do that, I thought I'd add just a bit of detail to this. And I started off using the hazelnut by Waverly, then started to realize like I really just didn't like it. It was a bit too light and that I needed to go in with some black instead. So once that hazelnut dried, I went right over it and just kind of wanted to do the peak of the house in black just to add some detailing to it. Dollar Tree has these cool wall decor stickers. This is a newer one, This Is Us. When I saw this, it really resonated with me and it was one of those stickers that I felt like I needed to pick up and incorporate into a DIY and I figured this house was perfect for that. We've got a story this past year, This Is Us. It is our life, the story of our life. And so, yeah. This is what I did with this plaque, and I think that there's so many other wall decor stickers like this that Dollar Tree has. Find one that resonates with you and make an awesome decor piece like this. These floating candles are super cool, but I really didn't know how I was going to incorporate them into a DIY. So I decided just to melt them down, and I'm going to melt them down and melt down a red and a yellow candle as well from Dollar Tree. To melt these candles down, I'm just gonna cut them up a bit and they're gonna be white melted down candles that I'm gonna put into another container. I'm just using an old glass container that um, I held on to. I think it had ginger in it, quite honestly, and those glass containers, I hold on to a couple because sometimes they work really good for holding salsa or homemade sauces that I make and yeah, so that's what I do, but this one is going to be used for melting down these floating candles. Sorry, Jamie, I know you said everybody needs a floating candle, but yeah. So to melt them down, I put them on a pizza tray from Dollar Tree, stick them in the oven at about 200 degrees, and in about 15 minutes, they're gonna be melted down. Dollar Tree has these snap glass containers, I guess you can call it. These are perfect for candles, because why not? Once the candles are melted down, I am going to recycle the wick. And to do that, once I pull it out, I'm just gonna add a bit of hot glue there on the metal tab, and I'm gonna place it on the bottom of my jar. That hot glue is gonna help just keep the wick in place so it doesn't float or move around. Once I've got it in place, I am good to go with my first layer, which is going to be the yellow layer. Does anybody know where I'm going with this? Yes. I'm gonna stick this in the oven, or oven, no, 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 no. I'm sticking this in the fridge. Once it's good and solidified like this here, I'm gonna go in and I mixed up the red and the orange 
and I am gonna now layer it. But as I'm doing this, I didn't have enough. I didn't melt enough. And guess what I don't have? I don't have any more red or yellow to make orange. Guess what I gotta do? What all of us crafters do when we're in a pinch. We head on over to Dollar Tree and pick up the supplies that we need. So in my case, it was another yellow candle because I really just was trying to use what I had in my stash and it wasn't enough. So to complete this, I am, I'm gonna just pick up another yellow candle, melt it down and finish this DIY. The color wasn't perfect, but thank goodness there was enough on that bottom layer to remelt it down. So I went ahead and put my second layer in, which was orange. Once the orange was dry, I went in with the white candles, the, the floating candles that I remelted down, only there wasn't enough. And since I had another white candle jar in my stash, I went ahead and melted that down and filled this jar the rest of the way. If you don't have a wick centering tool, just take a skewer, set it there, and it's gonna keep your wick in place. In full disclosure, because my orange layer wasn't completely dry when I poured the white in, it made the white come out peach. So my candy corn candle has a peach top layer. Nonetheless, it's still a pretty cute candle. It still looks like a Halloween inspired candle. It would have been perfect had I just waited a little bit longer, boo. <laughs> Now for these pom-poms that Jamie sent me, wasn't quite sure what to do with them, but after I did my candy corn candle, I came up with the idea to make these the color of the candy corn by painting them yellow and orange and leaving every third one white. I'm gonna wrap it right around the base of the neck here. And I think that this is super cute, but I wasn't quite liking the look of the elastic there. I felt like that was just kind of taken away from it. That's when I decided that I would use some raffia to cover that up. Perfect Halloween. Fall time raffia is a great addition to DIYs because I just feel like it reminds me of hay. And yeah, it just kind of brings that fall and harvest feel into a DIY. So I'm gonna wrap the neck with that, covering up that elastic trim. And I thought I'd finish it off with a raffia bow. This raffia bow was not enough. I was thinking to myself, self, there needs to be something more added to this. Wait a minute, there is a twist to this mystery box challenge using a four by four inch piece of the cardboard box that the contents of our mystery box came in. So with this piece, I decided just to pull out my pencil and maybe sketch out a piece of candy corn. Since it's the shape of candy corn, I'm gonna paint it like candy corn, only this one is gonna be the right colors. Maybe I should have made the white on the peacher side. Ah, potato, potato, right? So yeah, you can paint cardboard, did you know that? Yeah, and it works best when using chalk paint. This candy corn cardboard embellishment felt a bit flat to me, so I'm gonna take some of Waverly's matte varnish. I'm gonna give this a nice coating of that. And to the top of this, I am. I'm gonna do something I don't really like to do, and that's add some glitter to it. This is an opal essence glitter that I really like. It is a fine glitter, but I think it's gonna add just the sparkle and the finishing touch that this candy corn embellishment needs. And it's gonna go right here on top of my candle, finishing this candle off, making it even cuter than it was, and implementing that cardboard twist that Courtney put into this mystery box challenge. Look at how stinking cute that is. Now for this orange yarn. This one kind of had me stumped until I thought about the Dollar Tree pom-pom makers. Have you used these before? These are a great way to make pumpkins. 
why not make a pom-pom pumpkin out of orange yarn? These are super easy to work with. You just kind of open it up and it looks like an S once it's opened up with the two pieces. You wind that yarn around each side, getting it good and thick. You don't just want one layer or two. You want it nice and thick so that gap there at the bottom is pretty well full and it goes straight across. And you're gonna do that to both sides. Then you're gonna close up the pom-pom maker, making it round again so it's not an S. And then there's a groove there that allows you the capability of cutting the yarn that you just wound around it. So you're gonna need some good scissors, which I don't have right now because truth be told, I'm filming this at Ray's house. So the craft supplies are scarce and I grabbed the wrong scissors, but it's gonna get the job done. Once you've got both sides cut, you'll see that it looks like this. You're gonna take another piece of yarn and right in that groove that you use to guide your scissors to cut your yarn, you're gonna pull down some string, tying all that yarn together into a ball. Now you want this as tight as you can get it so none of your yarn comes out of what is going to be your pom-pom. Once you've got it good and tied, you can then just kind of open up the pom-pom maker and then you just need to kind of spread it apart there in the middle it pops off come on kelly there we go and you may need to give your pom-pom a bit of a haircut you're going to want to tie cut off those ends that you use to tie all the strands together but you will see that there is some unevenness if you like that keep it i kind of wanted this to be a nice clean shaped pom-pom because I'm making a pumpkin. And to do that, I figured I'd dive into these wood stems that Jamie sent me, and I'm just gonna put a bit of hot glue there, opened up my pom-pom a bit, and I'm gonna place that right in the center. This was the perfect orange for that. That's why he sent it, I think. I think he knew. And I'm gonna finish this off with a raffia bow. How cute would these be to make in all different sizes and colors? You could really get creative with it and just put it on an end table. We've got a challenge item here, these suction cup hooks. Now I kind of had an idea what I wanted to do with these, but that means removing the hook because I don't want to use them entirely for their intended use. To some degree, I do need to because these are suction cups. So you gotta utilize that, right? Once I got the hook out, I'm gonna cut off that tab there on the top, making it as flat as I can. Perfection isn't necessary, we just need it, that tab off of it. Boy, do I have a hack for you using raffia that makes it manageable to work with. When you unroll it, Dollar Tree's got this three pack, so I'd pick it up right about now if you see it. They even have colored raffia. But when you open it, it can be a bit unruly, a little bit hard to work with because it is so misshaped, right? Right. If you take some water from a water bottle and you just missed it, kind of dampening up that raffia a bit, it is going to give you the capability of straightening it out, smoothing it out a bit, making it more manageable to work with. And look at that, it's straight. I'm able to make a bow, a nice raffia bow. When you can work with raffia, it makes it fun to work with because the outcome is a bit different than twine. Like I said, raffia is great to add to the fall and harvest DIYs and decor because it gives it that feel, that harvesty feel of corn or hay. These burlap leaves are such a fun I guess item to pick up at this time every year you're getting five in a pack and they've got them in several different colors I'm using the green and the tan I'm using the larger leaves and the smaller ones I am removing the wire and I'm going to layer them just like so I've done a couple of raffia bows that I'm gonna place there then I'm gonna implement the raffia pumpkin that Jamie sent in my box just like so using hot glue to put all this together. Let's go take a look. On the back side here, yep, this is where the challenge item comes in. I'm gonna put a bit of hot glue, more than a bit of hot glue on the suction cup and adhere it onto the back of these pieces. Where am I going to put these pieces? Well, look here. These pieces are perfect 
for adding that holiday decor into your bathroom just by making decor pieces that you can apply to your mirrors, the corner of your mirrors. Now, I find that adding a bit of water to the suction cup helps them stick a lot longer and better. Look at how fun that is. It goes up so easy, they do not fall. I'm gonna tell you that now. And look at what a fun fall and harvest decor addition to my bathroom this is. I can't wait for Christmas. I'm gonna do some for Christmas. I was having so much fun doing these and since I had three bathrooms, I figured, heck, I'm gonna do two for each bathroom and why not add those acorns that were in my box as well. We've got more of these white birch tree stumps. You didn't think I was stopping at the yarn pumpkin, did you? No, no, no. These are fun. So I found a couple stumps, or I was looking for a couple of the stumps that were pretty close in diameter because I wanted to stack one set and have two off to the side. Now with these, yeah, these are gonna do it, yep. I'm gonna make a scarecrow face and I'm gonna do it using a Sharpie because I feel like paint is a bit harder to control uh, for me anyway. It is when drawing out a face. I find that if I can draw something with a pencil or a pen like a Sharpie, I have a better outcome. And so yeah, I'm gonna keep it simple and I'm just gonna use some simple shapes to get the job done and it's gonna be stinking adorable. Once I've got the face drawn out, it's always good to take a white marker or in this case, I'm using white paint and a very thin paintbrush and add some highlights to the eyes because that really is gonna kinda add dimension to the face of your scarecrow or whatever face it is that you're making and it's going to bring it to life just a bit more. With this one here, like I said, I wanted to stack it too high just to give some height difference in this DIY. So just using some hot glue, I'm gonna get those hot glued together. And I am also going to add those burlap hats that also came in my mystery box to the top of each of these. Now for the frame that was in my box as well that says mom on it, I needed some kind of a base or a platform because I'm making kind of a fall and harvest scenery with the scarecrows. So I'm gonna go in with some of Apple Barrel's caramel and I did really slap some on there, didn't I? Probably a bit too much. But I'm going with a color that is going to kind of blend in with hay. I'm gonna give this a quick coat or two. I'm not looking for perfection. Then I dug into my stash and found these cute corns from Dollar Tree last year. And I placed my scarecrow temporarily where I wanted them to be just so I could get the placement of the corn good because like I said, I'm kind of making a scenery, yeah, an autumn scenery, an autumn scene, scenery or scene, an autumn scene, a fall and harvest scenery scene. Ah, uh, you know what I'm saying. Once I've got them in place, I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and this I mean to glop on. The thicker, the better. I'm gonna spread this out along the base. I wanted that corn good and glued on because what am I gonna put on top of this Mod Podge? Some hay, because this is corn. There are scarecrow, you see the theme here? Typically you find scarecrows in the cornfield and there's a bunch of hay. And so yeah, I put on a lot of that Mod Podge onto the base just to really adhere this on. A little bit of loose hay is gonna be okay with me. I just really wanted to get the feel of what would be a cornfield with the scarecrow. Then it's time to make these not so temporary in their placement just by putting a bit of hot glue, kind of moving around some of that hay so it really adheres onto the base of this plaque. And I'm gonna put all three of those. Dollar Tree also has these adorable mini hay bales. I was looking for a space filler there in back of these scarecrows and these mini hay bales are going to work perfect just by stacking them. 
and I figured I'd add a couple of these mini pumpkins just to add a pop of color to this. Let's go take a look at this. Okay, here's a sneak peek. How cute is that? Oh my word. Okay, let's take a better look. I'm gonna say that this was such a fun piece to create. I hope you all enjoyed what I came up with using the items that Jamie, that crafty DIY guy sent me. I always look forward to these mystery box challenges because I really like getting the opportunity to work with other creators, meet new subscribers in the comment section of my videos. So don't be afraid if you are new to leave a comment because I'd like to meet you and welcome you myself to my channel. Don't forget to head on over to Jennifer's channel, a little bit of Common Crazy to see what I sent her, what she came up with. Courtney has put together a playlist that you can find in the description box below that kind of plays all of these mystery box challenges in order. And I tell you, it's binge worthy. So go pop yourself some popcorn, put your feet up and watch some creators create. Until next time, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I sure as heck am. Bye for now, everybody.